SpaceX has made some pretty major changes to Starlink this week with four new plans, three different tiers of network priority, and some other significant changes that will impact RVers and cruisers and how they use Starlink in their travels. We've got the details, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on SpaceX's Starlink. This is SpaceX's massive constellation of low Earth orbit satellites that blanket the Earth and are now providing pretty much near global coverage with uh, their Starlink constellation giving pretty fast, pretty low latency um, internet broadband almost anywhere you go. So it's a pretty exciting product, but it's been kind of confusing because it's been evolving and changing a lot over the years and over the months and over the weeks. So it seems like we're constantly doing little Starlink updates. Now we've got a big update because they've kind of consolidated a lot of the little changes they've been making into rethinking their plans into four new plans that are renamed um, kind of based on what they had before, three different tiers of network service, and a lot of changes in the terms of service and fine print and how these plans work that are significant. So first off, the four new plans. There's standard, there's priority, there's mobile, and there's mobile priority. And that replaces kind of the old names and we'll go through what replaces what in just a moment and the details of each of those. But then there's also three tiers of service behind those plans. Three levels of network access or network priority that really define the expected performance you will have with these plans. And so these are the lowest level you've got the best effort service or Starlink mobile service. This is the lowest priority on Starlink's network. Anyone else around, you are gonna be running slower than that. So you'll be in areas that are under peak demand, congested, um, busy hours. You can actually have some pretty awful service on if you are at the a plan that is giving you that lowest priority of the level. Um, the next up is Starlink Standard, which has kind of been the, in the past considered a priority level of service. The Starlink Standard is, well, the standard level. It should, in your, at least in your residential areas, and your core areas where you've got a, a plan that gives you this, should give you decent performance all the time. And then they've now got a new tier of service, a kind of Starlink priority, or also mobile priority. That is a higher level of service that takes precedence over everybody else, gives you faster uploads, faster downloads, a higher priority on the network, more consistent performance, but you don't have unlimited data. You have capped data, so once you run out of priority data, you drop back down to one of those other tiers. So it's a little bit complicated. Uh, we're going to try and explain what each of these four different plans mean, how you pay for them, and the important thing, now you can switch between them and adjust based on your needs. So let's dive in. First up, we have Starlink Standard. This is the, um, used to be known as the Starlink Residential Plan. It's the plan intended for fixed residential locations, you know, typical home users. It is Starlink's most affordable plan. And if you are in an area where you could sign up for residential service and they give this to you, because big parts of the country are still waitlisted, when you are at your home address, you have a, you know, standard tier of uh, priority data. So that middle tier. Um, much, much faster and more reliable than mobile users. So Starlink Standard costs $120 a month is the normal price. If you are in an area where SpaceX has a lot of excess Starlink capacity, they actually offered it $90 a month, so an even cheaper price, and that will automatically change there. And you know, it's overall a great plan, great pricing, but the big catch that has always been there with Starlink Standard is that it is intended for fixed locations, which makes it kind of a challenge for mobile users who want to take service with them and travel. Now, SpaceX has been experimenting with detecting moves as little as half a mile and sending out alerts, letting people know that you've got to either update your service address or switch to one of the mobile plans. So, Updating your service address has been kind of a trick that's been there since the very beginning around these plans is you can change your service address on the SpaceX website as you travel and assuming there is capacity, you can change your Starlink standard address wherever you go, but it is a manual process. And if there is no capacity, well, you're, you're kind of out of luck. SpaceX might offer you kind of a little known back end plan called the, the best effort plan that is basically puts you down at that lower tier of service. But for the most part, you're kind of intended to stick to your primary locations with the Starlink standard plan. And the next plan SpaceX has is the Starlink priority plan. This used to be the Starlink business plan and at one point in time they called it a premier plan and everything else. But the Starlink priority plan 
gives you, intent, again, intended for fixed location usage, but more high demanding users, it gives you a set amount of priority data. So this plant makes the plant cost more. It's one terabyte for $250 a month, two terabytes for $500 a month, six terabytes for $1,500 a month. So it's an expensive plan. And well, in the past, when that data was used up on the business plan, the Starlink speeds would be throttled down to just one megabit per second for the remainder of your service months. So it was a really kind of a fixed bucket of data. And that was kind of frustrating for people who had the needs for a lot of data. Now, with these new changes, SpaceX is changing it so that once you use up your priority data, you drop down to being basically a Starlink standard plan. So you use up your priority data and then the um, the priority plan drops down to being a standard plan with unlimited data for the remainder of the month just at a lower priority on the network. So if you've got kind of demanding needs or you know you want to be at the front of the line and you know, uh, uh, ahead of everybody else when it comes to network performance on Starlink, this is an interesting plan to go for. But again, it is a fixed location plan with the same limitations as standard as we described. Uh, there is one also other new twist to these plans is if you do need more priority data with a Starlink priority plan, for 50 cents a gigabyte, you can opt in to, instead of dropping back down to Starlink standard, you could just start paying overage charges to keep having priority data, just paying again, more and more and more at that 50 cents a gig meter. Now let's talk about the two mobile plans. First up, we've got the Starlink mobile plan, formerly known as Starlink Rome, both the uh, regional and global version. Now it's just Starlink mobile. And this plan then comes in two different flavors that you can pay for. It's $150 a month for regional service that covers the continent of your home address. So North America and most of our audience, North America would be covered if you've got a US address or a Canadian address. Or there's the global service for $200 a month that gives you global coverage on any place that Starlink has service. But both of these plans are limited to coverage on land. So not coverage on water, not uh, cover coverage crossing the ocean. We'll get to that in a second. But now these two plans, um, they run always at the lowest priority on Starlink's network. So if you're traveling through a town, all the Starlink standard users and all the Starlink priority users have much, much higher priority in the network and you're competing with all the other Starlink roam users that are you know, sharing the satellites passing overhead, which means that you might end up with performance that gets down to some pretty dismal conditions. We've seen reports sub five megabits per second, which is a, a, a pretty disappointing amount. And uh, that is not unexpected according to what SpaceX tells people to expect with these mobile plans. Now, these new mobile plans now do have a few interesting twists to them, some significant changes. One, SpaceX, when they first started offering this plan and selling the flat high performance Starlink dish to RV manufacturers and selling, reselling it via WineGuard and stuff, that plan was offered with you can get this $150 a month Starlink roam service and use your Starlink in motion while driving down the highway. Great way to watch Netflix while boogieing across, for your passengers to watch Netflix while boogieing across West Texas or something. Now, these Starlink mobile plans do not include in motion usage. This is intended for portability. It works wherever you go, but it works is intended to work when you are in a stop location, no matter which type of dish you have. Um, that is a very significant change in the way these new terms have been written. Um, but there's kind of a, an antidote for that, is Starlink now allows this Starlink mobile plan to buy mobile priority data for $2 a gigabyte. So you can opt into this, and once you turn it on, you're now no longer getting unlimited low priority data, you're paying by the gigabyte, $2 a gigabyte, expensive, but you have high priority data, the same as the Starlink priority plan, and your data now works in motion, it works on the ocean, it works uh, all the other places that you might wanna go. So you can turn that on and off as needed, which is an important change. It's kind of frustrating for people who paid for the Starlink in motion system and uh, now no longer have it included, but at least they do have an option. Or you can upgrade to that fourth plan, the Starlink mobile priority. Starlink mobile priority is kind of SpaceX's flagship plan for Starlink. It used to be known as the Starlink Maritime Plan. And this kind of gives you the best of mobile mobility and the best of priority data, but it has some costs and some important limitations as well. 
So first off, you have a data bucket that you're paying for, and this plan starts at 50 gigabytes for $250 a month, for a terabyte is $1,000 a month, and for five terabytes is $5,000 a month. So by marine standards, that's, not, that's actually not expensive compared to prior marine plans, but for people used to land-based plans or cellular plans, that is very, very expensive. But that gives you then priority data that you use up and um, gives you the highest priority in the network, and it works in motion, and it works anywhere in the world, ocean or land, that Starlink has service. Now, what happens when you run out of that, say you've got the 50 gigabyte plan and you run out? Well, if you've run out and you're near land or on inland waterways or rivers or whatnot, then you just drop back down to Starlink mobility. So you drop back down as if you had the regular mobile plan, but you are still allowed to use it in motion. Um, but if you are in the ocean, if you are far from shore, you are cut off and the only thing you can do online is go to the Starlink website to pay for a higher tier service or to turn on um, additional a la carte a mobile priority data. And just like you can add it on a la carte for the basic mobile plan, you can pay $2 a gigabyte, turn that on, and start paying by the gigabyte as it goes to keep connected as you're cruising across an ocean. Or now, the one nice thing that Starlink has done is they've actually now made it easy for you to change your plans right in the Starlink app between any of these four different options um, kind of on demand. So you can adjust what plan you're using depending on what your particular needs are. But it's not quite as simple as it should be because, well, if you make a change to a higher tier plan, that change takes effect immediately. They charge you immediately a prorated different for the remainder of your service month and you're good to go. But if you change to a lower priced plan, that change doesn't take effect until your next billing month. So you do have to kind of plan your timing and stuff and figure out what plans you might need when and where, but it does open the door for people who are willing to kind of you know, manage things and to play the games to you know, have Go to a Starlink standard service if you're going to be someplace for an extended period of time. Switch to Starlink uh, mobile when you're going to be in motion and you don't want to worry about moving your address around. Um, pay for some a la carte data if you need to be in motion or cross, do a quick ocean crossing or you know, cross out of where the normal land coverage is. Or you need a little bit of extra high priority data to get around the riffraff who are working with you at Quartzsite or something like that. So you can manage your plans like that and opt in and pay for extra things. And then when you don't need it anymore, switch your plan back down to a lower level. So they've increased the flexibility there and it's really nice that they've done this right in the Starlink app so you can make those sort of changes. So that's a nice change. So now, now some concluding thoughts. It has been kind of a roller coaster watching Starlink change terms, revise things, adjust pricing pull the rug out from under people with the various use cases and stuff. But we think that this seems like they might be kind of at last thinking things through, updating all the terms of service, the fair use policy and everything else to have kind of a consistent policy going forward. And they're actually now starting to send out alerts to people who have been kind of operating outside the system um, to let them know that their plan has been being used outside of terms of service and they need to potentially switch plans or risk getting cut off. So we've seen people, boaters who've been using the basic Starlink RV plan or Rome plan, crossing oceans, paying $150 a month, getting notified by SpaceX that later in May, in just another week or so, they'll be required to switch to a plan that supports oceanic data or they will no longer be connected. We also expect SpaceX to begin enforcing the, the in-motion usage terms, so no longer allow the Starlink standard dish to be, uh, dishy here to be used on in-motion installations, um, which a lot of people have been doing, and instead forcing people into the flat high-performance dishy, which is a lot more expensive, uh, $599 versus $2,500. So the, um, people are going to be forced to potentially upgrade their hardware if they want to keep in motion use. And then there's still a lot of open questions because, well, like what about the typical coastal cruiser in motion use where you're traveling slowly and your motion might just be swinging around at anchor? Will Starlink can still consider that stationary and land-based and allow the basic mobility plan to work? Or are people who want to swing at anchor going to be forced to play for the $250 a month plan to 
even support just that level of mobility. So there are still some open questions. We'll see how this starts to percolate out in the field, how Starlink goes about actually enforcing their terms. And well, of course, we'll see what changes they make next because this is SpaceX, this is Starlink. They launch a new rocket every week and they change something every week. So stay tuned and we will keep you updated. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.